This is your Essential Business Briefing. I'm Stephen Carroll. Coming up... The new COVID Balancing Act as governments seek to wind down financial support for businesses without creating a new crisis. We'll speak to a Parisian bar and restaurant owner about reopening after seven months and his hopes for the future. And what about a baguette with your electricity bill? We'll take you to northern France where the postman also delivers your daily bread. France is getting back to business as COVID-19 restrictions are being eased here. The first step was on the 19th of May with the reopening of cafe and restaurant terraces and non-essential shops. The next stage will happen on the 9th of June when indoor dining can resume, gyms will reopen and trade fairs and conferences will be allowed with limited capacity. The third and final stage comes on the 30th of June when the curfew is lifted and capacity limits for events will be removed too. Opening up means the government rethinking the massive financial aid it's been providing to businesses during the pandemic. Kate Moody's been looking into this. Uh, Kate, what help have French businesses been getting so far? Well, since the country's first lockdown back in March of 2020, employers have been eligible for payroll support to avoid large-scale layoffs. At its height, the government furlough programme was subsidising the salaries of up to 8.5 million French private sector workers. About 3 million people were receiving that support in April of this year. 675,000 companies have applied for government-backed loans, nearly 140 billion euros worth of credit. The worst affected sectors have been able to request exemptions from or delays to their tax and social security contributions and apply for grants from a solidarity fund to cover some of their losses. The government mantra was supporting businesses no matter what the cost. What changes are planned? Well, most of that aid is being maintained but scaled back. The furlough programme, for example, will soon cover 72% of workers' salaries rather than the initial 84%. Employers will also have to pay an increasing percentage of the paychecks, up to 40% for most sectors. More generous terms remain in place for businesses that are still not allowed to open or operate at full capacity. Tax relief is being phased out, although the worst affected industries can still apply for some reductions. Direct aid from the Solidarity Fund will remain available, but that will cover a smaller percentage of losses, just 20% by August. All companies can apply for that aid, but again, the rules will remain more flexible for sectors like hospitality and events. How much is all of this costing? Well, about 90 billion euros was spent on emergency support for households and businesses last year, a third of that on the furlough programme. France's public accounts minister says that government aid plus lost tax revenue came at a hefty price of 158 billion euros in 2020. That figure is expected to rise to 171 billion this year for a three-year total of nearly half a trillion euros. Okay, Kate Moody, thank you. The return of cafe and restaurant terraces across France has been the most visible change in the reopening process. Despite the changeable weather, customers have flocked back to businesses that were closed for seven months. But less than half of French restaurants have outside dining space, so many have remained closed for now. Let's speak now to Guillaume Gage, who owns several bars and restaurants here in Paris, including Gyoza Bar and Passage 46. Guillaume, thanks for being with us. How has your reopening gone? Have you got your outdoor spaces up and running? Yes, we uh, we reopen. We're very happy to to have this opportunity to reopen. And uh, there's, you know, we we are feeling the energy and uh, it start, it's it's good to feel like everybody, to, to see everybody outside and uh, no, we did a pretty good start. Um, I don't have like big, big space uh, in a big outdoor space in my restaurant, but um, that's a that's a pretty good start, if I can say yes. Tell me about how you adapted your business during the pandemic when you weren't able to serve people in the usual way. Uh, we, I mean, that was, you know, pretty confusing for everybody, but the, I think um, we just had to adapt. You know, there's nothing we can do, like we're not part of the government, so... That's, that was the way it is. We had to close. The only way to uh, to stay busy was to doing like deliveries, takeouts. So we adapt, we change all the concepts. Um, for me also, that was very important, like I was telling you, to, uh, to keep my teammates, if I can say that, my teammates, my partners, my staff involved and to stay busy. And uh, we were working hard on the communication, on Instagram. Um, so that, that was good. But that's the, that was the way to do it. In percentage terms, how much of your regular business have you been able to do over the past year? Uh, in terms of percentage, I would say maybe 
you know, we work hard and we promote this new way to, to sell the food a lot. So I think that was only 50% that what we usually do. So that was not too bad, if I can say that. Then we didn't have, and because of the French uh, government, we're, we were able to um, to adapt also the, the different, you know, um, to work with my, my staff and sometimes to give them a part-time, more like a part-time planning. So that was that was pretty good. We adapt this way. And as you're reopening, how how are you adapting to the government aid being wound down? If you've been using the furlough scheme, that part ter- part time activity scheme. Yeah, I mean we um, we just working like I mean the government was pretty helpful, and um, they first they gave a lot of uh, help. They give money to I think restaurants and different businesses. They're giving money. They help you with the unemployment. So as long as you like I was telling you, like you stay busy and you do the the takeout, the delivery, all that stuff. You you can uh, you can work. You know, at the end we were not uh, we're we're busy, so that was good. We're feeling good. When you see some of the restaurants completely close, you like you're doing the right thing, and you make also what it was very important to keep your customer, and to make your customers happy. One of the big problems facing the industry now is a shortage of staff. So many people have left the hospitality sector. Is that a yes. problem for you? The way we did things, I needed all my staff and I, um, I involve, I make my, my staff to be involved with me and to bring me new ideas and to participate with all the meetings. So I'm lucky maybe today, but maybe that because that I did that, like I kept 100% of my staff today. What about revenues? When do you think that revenues will, will bounce back? I think it will bounce back pretty fast. That's why we uh, are planning to be complete, you know, to be open. Uh, my four restaurants will be open um, the entire summer because uh, we feel the energy. Like people, you know, we have been closed for seven months. So people want to go back to the restaurant. They want to enjoy life. They want to drink cocktails. Uh, and, and I think it's going to be very busy. So as soon as we going to reopen, uh, we'll be able to reopen. I think we'll do some pretty good numbers. There are a lot of warnings about the state of the sector in general. Do you think that Paris's restaurant scene will be very different after this crisis? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I think, you know, some people are not very like, um, you know, they fear that. But I think, you know, I've, I've, we had the example, if you we can compare it to the US, because they reopened before us. And uh, it's crazy over there. It's um, all the restaurants, bars, clubs are packed. So I think, you know, in all the big cities, it's going to be the same. Do you think that your industry will need government help for many months to come? Do you think you're going to need help further down the line? Of course, it will be helpful. Uh, I mean, it's good if we have help for the, if I can say the transition. Because for now, we don't know. We only have a few seats, you know, outside. So we don't do crazy number. Then when we will do 50%, we'll be limited also. So hopefully until we are completely open, like um, they will they will give us some help. But I, I really want to say also thank you to the French government because they did a pretty good job for this employment flexibility and to give us some money every month. In this this crisis, are there positive changes to your business that you're going to maintain as things return to hopefully normal? Yeah, you know that's that was it. It um it teached us, if I can say that, like a, a different way to work, a different way to promote, to be um, you know on all the social media because all the restaurants were closed and people also with the curfew they were home. So they were only on the on their phone and always on their phone, sorry. And so the only way to promote was Instagram, Facebook, you know, TikTok. So that was uh, for us, like we pushed on that. So it's a new, it's a new audience for us, you know, more a younger crowd. And, um, and now we do way more uh, deliveries that we were doing before. So hopefully we keep this part of the business and when we'll be reopened, like, you know, it will be good for to do both. Okay, Guillaume Gage, thank you very much for speaking to us. Next, we're taking you to Northern France, where the Postal Service has taken on a new role in supplying small communities. Faced with a lack of local bakeries, customers can now order their baguettes to be delivered along with their letters. 
Camille Adelaide into Emerald Maxwell have this report. Perhaps the most stereotypical French delivery service ever. Ici, c'est une baguette et une baguette ancienne. Along with the post, a fresh, crunchy baguette delivered straight to your door, as this village is too small to have its own bakery. Ah, ben ça rend un grand service aux gens. It really helps people out, and it gives my job an added plus. As the volume of letters drops, we have to find other things to offer as well. It's a service that their post, the French Postal Network, has been offering for the past three years, and locals really appreciate the convenience. Bonjour Nathalie. Ça va bien aujourd'hui? Ouais, ça va et toi? Il pleut, mais ça va. Que des bonnes nouvelles. Ouais, merci. Et la baguette. Merci. Ben, c'est bien parce que je peux. It's good because I don't have to go anywhere. I'm working from home at the moment, and it's really helpful to have the bread brought to me every day. To make sure their baguettes stay safe and dry, locals have had to innovate with baguette shaped letter boxes. A small community of Bouzincourt in northeast France doesn't have a local bakery, but this baguette vending machine does a roaring trade. The mayor is worried. This is an old grocery store that sold bread, and there was the cafe and restaurant next door, both closed. If there's nothing left in the village, it dies, but not everyone can make it to a supermarket. The postman can also deliver medicines and even hot meals. The service is paid for by local businesses. That's all from us for now, but you can find all of our previous episodes on the France 24 website. And you can get in touch on social media with your comments or questions. Until next time, thanks for watching.